Hello everybody. Today I'm going to work on a plane I've been wanting to get to for a while. It's a Brattleboro number 303. It's a Steers patent plane. If you've never seen one, they're pretty neat. Let's take a look at it. This old beauty was made somewhere between 1883 and 1887. It's a neat looking plane. You can see the top of the tote. The horn is missing. That's something I'm going to have to fix. It does have a really neat looking side profile. It's a number three size plane when you compare it to the Stanleys or the other standard planes. And what's really cool about these planes is the rosewood inserts that they have on the sole. Uh, these have dried out and shrunk and gone uh, concave and there's pieces missing off the front. So that's going to have to be something else I fix. The right side, I'm sorry, the left side cheek has a fair amount of uh, pitting. So I'm hoping that it will clean up nice. Won't be long, we'll find out. And there's a better look at the rosewood inserts missing from the front. And the only thing left to do is to break this old beauty down. So there she is with all her beautiful parts. Broke down easy, nothing was stuck. Interesting fact, in 1976 I was stationed at uh, Camp David, Maryland as a presidential guard. And I met a gentleman in a barber shop down in Thurmont, Maryland. He walked in for a haircut, he was 103 years old. That guy was alive when this plane was made somewhere between 1883 and 1886. Before I start to work on this plane, I wanted to show you this unique frog adjustment uh, device that they have on this plane. And the way this thing works, is there's a little tab right here and it fits into the holes in the iron when you turn this big knob on the back that tab moves back and forth and it runs runs on a little mechanism right here. I tap the pin out of the frog that holds the depth adjuster in that big brass adjustment nut right there. I just wanted to get a better look at how it's put together and makes it easier to clean the frog up. The first thing I want to do before I start to clean up though is to uh, straighten up this frog. So I gotta cut that top of the horn flat and smooth so I can add another piece of rosewood onto it. And about two seconds on the miter saw it's done. And finding rosewood nowadays is not always the easiest thing to do. There are places you can still get it but I happen to have this uh, rosewood level that was trashed, Stanley, and I'm gonna get my rosewood from there for both the horn and the the inserts on the base of the plane. But after looking at the difference in color of the rosewood, the dark tote and the lighter of that level, I decided to go a different way. For just such emergencies I've got a box of totes and a box of rosewood, mahogany, and for the best match I ended up going with the tote, an old one. I cut that bottom part off and that's what I'm going to use to uh, repair the horn. When you look at how nicely that lines up, it's a no-brainer. I removed some of the excess and now I'm ready to glue it on and let it sit for a day. There's nothing too tricky about the glue up. I use Gorilla Glue. I think I've done a video on tote repair. At least how to put one that's broken back together. No, I haven't done one yet on fixing horns like this. 
but just make sure the glue covers the entire or will cover the entire surface. This one will when it when it smears together here. Put your piece on where you're going to want it to go. So it'll be like that. And you want to wear gloves because this Gorilla Glue does not like to come off of the meat. And then the trick is electrical tape. So I've got I've got it flat on the top of the horn so I'm going to go straight down the sides everything's staying at 90 degree I'm going to pull it down around the bottom come back up and that first time around is just to get get it basically held in place now I'm going to look at that alignment again see it's off center I'm going to come around again and this time I'm going to stretch and that's acting like a clamp now stretch it coming down one more time of the same thing stretching stretch it all the way around check the alignment one more time she looks good and that's it so I tapped out the rosewood strips and now it's time for me to put it in the sink with some hot soapy water. I use Simple Green and scrub the frog and the base down. So after scrubbing I can see that the frog and the body has I'd say at least 90 percent of the japanning left. Most of the loss is on the top edges on the inside of those cheeks and around the front here where the knob goes so this is when I, I gotta make the call what if anything do I do and given the fact that this is a fairly rare plane I'm gonna just clean that japanning up as best I can not redo no touch up that's the plan first I'm gonna see what's underneath all this rust that side is pretty bad this one is nice and smooth with uh, would have a good patina in a couple of my other videos I showed you what I use I have my own little little scraper I make sure I got a fresh burr on it and now I'm gonna see what's underneath this stuff this is how you do it so I skipped through most of the scraping it's taken a few minutes I like using the scraper because I can control what I'm doing a lot better than I can if I use sandpaper or anything else. And if there's any hope of retaining any of the old patina, this is how you're going to do it. So that's about as far as I think I would go with the scraping. I'm going to hit the other side real quick and see what we get. I'm going to use a worn piece of sandpaper on the block and I'm just going to try to even up the patina that's on there. It's just a gentle, gentle rubbing with the sandpaper, and you can see the color blending together. You want to avoid putting too much pressure anywhere and making it silver shiny. Now I'm going to hit it with a really worn old sponge sander, just to buff it up. And go all the way around, hit both sides around the edges where the japanning's coming in it's just kind of buffing off some of that surface rust without messing up the old japanning I'm going to do that over the whole thing so then I've lightly gone over everything with some 4 aught steel wool that includes the the old japanning and the next thing I want to do is wipe it all down with my dirty oil rag so I use that dirty oil rag to work my dirty oil into every nook and cranny. You don't want to miss anything. And for those that might have missed it in my other videos, this is what's in the dirty oil rag. So about 24 hours have passed. It's 4.20 a.m. again. 
and it's time to get this tote shaped up. The initial shaping is going to be on the bandsaw and then I got a small belt sander that I use to uh, take it to the next step. But there it is, isn't that pretty? Here's a look at the tote with the new horn all finished up. I'd say it matched up pretty good. And it will look even better once the lacquer's on it. So I put about five coats of lacquer on the tote knob, sanded steel wool, and just put another real light coat on them. So two, three, maybe four more, and they, they should be ready. The small parts have been cleaned up. The cap iron and the iron cleaned up. The iron is sharpened. They had a back bevel on it, so I had to uh, also sharpen, make sure I did the back bevel. There's really no way of taking that out at this point. And what I want to do now is wipe the uh, dirty oil off the frog and the base and see how that japanning looks. Lots of progress made. So the frog and the base, they've been uh, waxed, looking pretty good. And look at the horn on that tote. You'd never know that uh, that horn was busted off. There's all the parts clean, ready to go back together. Put the new wood into the base. That's looking real pretty. There's a look at the top of the horn. Look from the other side. I think it's time to put it together and take it for a test drive. And there she is, all done. Isn't that a beautiful old plane? Get a look at her all around. Lots of old patina and a really cool looking bottom. Kind of a unique thing right there in the throat. Those two screws that are behind the knob adjust the plate that closes up the gap. I've got my 1 and 5 8 inch poplar in a vise and I'm ready to see what this old 303 will do. That's a little better. Now she's starting to peel them off. Whatever the issue was seems to be resolved and we got some nice shaving just rolling right out of the throat. Look at that. It was uh, not the easiest plane to set due to the lack of a lateral adjustment, but I like the depth setting on it. A lot of slop in between the high and the low when you're making the switch, but once you get it set, it does a really good job. One final look at the spoils of war. Nice shavings that come out of this old 303, and to show you how well it does, there's a look at the shaving right there. So I'm guessing you're not going to find a whole lot of Brattleboro plane videos on the internet. It's uh, an uncommon one, maybe rare. They weren't made for very many years. The uh, rosewood infill dovetailing in the bottom is really neat. I enjoy doing this one. 